Hi guys, my name is Minhajri Nasari and you're watching another tutorial on the C programming language and I will continue my discussion on the main memory layout in the C language. So in the previous tutorial, we talked about how the main memory was divided into five portions and each portion had its own purpose. So now in this tutorial, we're going to see how a program uses these portions when it is being compiled and executed. So right here I have drawn three boxes and each box will represent a portion of my main memory. So the first box right here, this is going to represent the heap portion of the main memory and this is where dynamic memory allocation takes place. And now the second box right here, this will represent the uninitialized data segment portion of the main memory and this is where the static and global variables are stored that are either uninitialized or that are initialized to the value zero. And this final box right here, this will represent the stack portion of my main memory. And the stack portion is where all your functions and all your local variables are stored. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So the program which I'm going to test is written right here in the notepad. I'm going to test this program in this memory layout. So what this program is doing is that it's simply going to find the average of the elements of my dynamic array. So inside here in the main function, I've defined an integer variable size and a double variable average. And I've also defined an integer pointer PTR. And with the help of my malloc function, I have dynamically allocated 16 bytes of memory. And dynamic allocation takes place right here in the heap. That means 16 bytes will be allocated inside this portion of the main memory. And now I'm sending the address of the first byte to my integer pointer PTR. So simply I've created a dynamic array of size 16 bytes, which can hold on to four integer elements. So right here in my for loop, I have assigned the elements of that dynamic array with the index value i, with the value of the loop variable i. And after that, I'm sending the pointer to my dynamic array and the size of the dynamic array. The size, that means the number of elements in the dynamic array. So I'm sending both of these arguments to my average function. Inside my average function, I've defined two double variables. And now I'm sending the pointer to my dynamic array and the size of the dynamic array to another function called the sum function. And now the sum function is defined at the top here. And now inside the sum function, I'm simply going to add the elements of the dynamic array together and I'm going to store it inside my global variable total. So total is a global variable because it is defined outside all functions. So whatever changes you make in a global variable, those changes will be made in the entire program. So I do not need to return anything from this function. So right here, my total global variable, it will contain the sum of the elements of the dynamic array and I'm going to divide it by the number of elements in the dynamic array and I'm going to store the average inside my double variable avg. And now I'm going to return my double variable avg. And right here, my another, this is, this is a local variable. So this variable belongs to my main function and its name is also avg. So it will receive the average returned by the average function and it's going to print it using the printf function. And in the end, the program is going to end. So first of all, since my program contains a global variable total and it is initialized to zero, that means when my program is compiling, this global variable total will be stored right here in my, uh, in my memory portion and in uninitialized data segments. So the global variable total will be stored right here. And now let's talk about the stack portion of the main memory. So memory is allocated for each function inside the stack portion. And each function is represented by a small rectangle and variables associated with that function are written inside that rectangle. And this rectangle is also called the stack frame. So right now, first of all, my very first function in the program is the main function. So 
uh, memory will be allocated for the main function and that is going to be represented by this rectangle right here and this rectangle right here is also called the stack frame for the main function and now inside the main function I have my integer size and I have my double variable avg and I have my pointer variable ptr and now right here memory is dynamically allocated inside the heap so 16 bytes will be dynamically allocated inside the heap and this will happen during the runtime of the program so when your program is running it will dynamically allocate 16 bytes of space in the heap so i'm just going to write this right here these suppose these are 16 bytes and the address of the first byte so the address of the first byte will be sent to the integer pointer ptr and now after that uh, the for loop will execute and the for loop will simply assign the value of the integer i to the elements of the dynamic array and since the integer i is local to the for loop so now i'm simply going to draw another small rectangle and this rectangle is being drawn inside the frame of my main function and I've drawn this rectangle simply for the for loop. So inside the rectangle, I'm going to add the integer i, which is local to the for loop, and, and the for loop will start iterating. And as soon as the for loop terminates, this portion of the memory will be deallocated. So it will be removed from the program. So let me just use my eraser right here, and let me just erase this small little rectangle from here so this memory which was allocated to the local variable i of the for loop will be deallocated so now i'm going to change to my brush again and after that the average function will be called and the pointer ptr and the size variables will be will be sent as arguments to the average function so now i'm going to draw another stack frame for my average function then i'm going to name it average and now inside my average function i simply have two variables i have an avg double variable and i have a result double variable so now the average function will now call the sum function so now i'm again going to draw another frame for my sum function and now i'm just going to move at the top here and inside the sum function, I do not have any local variables for the sum function, but I do have a for loop. And inside the for loop, there is a local variable. So I'm simply going to draw a small rectangle for the for loop inside the sum function. And I'm going to simply include the local variable i of the for loop. So the for loop will start iterating. And once the for loop has completed its iteration, the total variable the total the global variable total will have the sum of the elements of the dynamic array so this will be equal to some specific sum for example x so now the global variable will have the value x stored in it so after that what will happen is that the for loop will terminate so again the for loop the uh, variables the local variables of the for loop will be deallocated from the program so i'm going to remove this rectangle from here and now since the sum function has completed its task the for loop has completed its execution so now the sum function will be deallocated from the stack so it will be removed from here so this portion of the memory will not be part of my program anymore and then i will go back to my previous function and now the average function will simply calculate the average of the total divided by the size and it will return the average to the main function so as soon as it returns the value of the uh, variable average to the main function again since the average function has completed its task it has returned the value back to the main function so it will also be deallocated from my stack so this will be removed from a stack and this this memory will not be reserved for the program anymore so now inside my main function what will happen is that 
I've, since now right here I'm calling my print function okay what what happened right here okay just let me so right here I'm calling my print function so since printf is also a function so again again what will happen is that another stack frame will be uh, another stack frame will be created for the printf function and after the printf function has printed the value of the variable avg again this function will be deallocated from the stack frame it will be removed from the stack frame and finally since i'm using the get ch function as well so get for the get ch function again uh, uh, another stack frame will be created and the get ch function will simply wait for the user to press any character from the keyboard and as soon as the user press a presses a character from the keyboard then this function will be deallocated from the stack frame and in the end since the main function has completed its task so since the main function has completed its task it has reached the return zero part the, the return zero of the state the return zero statement has been reached by the main function that means the main function will also be deallocated from the stack and my stack will be empty at the end so just before the program terminates just before the program terminates, the dynamically allocated heap memory, this will also be uh, removed, this will also be deallocated, and this total global variable right here, which was stored inside the uninitialized data segment on the main memory, this will also be deallocated from the main memory. So this is how the memory layout works in the C language. So if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section and thanks for watching this video.